I've talked about Troma before, mostly in my Toxic Avenger reviews a few years ago. When I did those reviews, I was just getting into video reviews and I was trying to do it as a character, copying off of existing internet personalities like the Angry Video Game Nerd. Since then, I've realized that while not a lot of people know about Troma, they have a pretty loyal following. The reviews even got me a guest spot on Transmission Awesome, a podcast featured on thatguywiththeglasses.com. So I thought I'd just be myself and review the few Troma films that I have seen. Troma has a huge library of movies, and by huge, well, just check out their website at www.troma.com. For those of you who don't know Troma and have yet to experience one of their films, Troma is a New Jersey-based independent film company best known for their flagship cult hit, The Toxic Avenger which came out in 1984 and earned a cult following. The company was founded by Lloyd Kaufman, a then-struggling, and some would argue still-struggling, filmmaker who started out making sex comedies like Waitress and Squeeze Play. Most, if not all, of their films have gone straight to video, and because of their extremely violent and crude nature, they can be pretty hard to find. Back in the 90s, if you happened to come across one of these movies at your local video store, it was usually an edited version. I didn't realize it until later on, but growing up, I owned the edited version of The Toxic Avenger. The back of the box actually states that it's unrated, but there were two versions of the movie from what I gathered. The R-rated version, which was actually a bit longer, that came in a black box, and the truncated version I had, which was sold in a white box. Although the director's cut, the definitive and most graphic version of the film, can be pretty intense if you're squeamish. The one I grew up with was still a unique specimen. So unique that when I did my top 25 video, The Toxic Avenger earned a spot at number 25. It's hard to explain what makes this movie so great unless you have the right mindset. It's essentially a comic book movie marketed as a romantic slasher comedy. Ma? Oh, ma. It takes four genres and blends them together. There's no way this would work in Hollywood, and that's why it stuck with me throughout the years. The film is very tongue-in-cheek. The acting is over-the-top bad, it has several gratuitous booby scenes, and the violence is off the hook. If this were just your run-of-the-mill slasher movie, where an unstoppable killing machine was just going around hacking off teenagers one by one, I probably wouldn't give it a second thought. But this is the Toxic Avenger, the first superhero from New Jersey, and he only kills the bad guys. He's a monster superhero, transformed from a vat of toxic waste, and he's out to get revenge on those who wronged him. If you look at superhero movies today, all of the heroes set some sort of moral boundary for themselves. Usually, that just means that they don't kill anyone, but superheroes generally don't take revenge. Not only does the monster kill bad guys in explicitly gruesome ways, but he finds a love interest in a blind woman. It's a goofy setup, but when you think about it, it makes sense. Of course, they have to give you the goofy sex scene, but for the most part, they play it out like a sensitive, blossoming love story. There's even a love montage. Here's the basic premise. The Toxic Avenger starts out as a nerdy mop boy at a health spa. He gets picked on by a group of bullies, who also happen to be responsible for a series of hit-and-run murders. The film wastes almost no time establishing this, so there's no mystery when the monster comes back for them later on. The bullies finally get fed up with Melvin and play a really nasty prank on him. It all amounts to Melvin falling into a misplaced barrel of toxic waste, transforming him into a hideously deformed monster. My little Melvin! He must have finally reached puberty! We find out that the toxic waste created a chemical reaction in Melvin, allowing him to sense evil and only forcing him to kill bad people. Not unlike Spider-Man with his spider senses. There are all sorts of action scenes. My personal favorite is a fight in a Mexican restaurant, where the monster meets his blind girlfriend. There's also an alley fight and a car chase. Standard stuff, but pretty ambitious for Troma given their limited budget. The turning point is when Melvin kills a little old lady, making people think he's finally gone bad, until we find out that the old lady had a police record a mile long. In fact, she was head of an international white slavery ring, and she had a police record a mile long. The corrupt mayor uses the old lady's death to turn the city against him, and orders the National Guard to come kill him. It all boils down to a pretty anticlimactic showdown, where Melvin and the mayor face off in front of the whole town. You fat slob, let's see if you have any gut. It's a pretty satisfying movie, although understandably, it's not for everyone. The people I have the most problem getting to watch it are those who are really used to modern-day, big-budget superhero movies. They take one look at Toxic Avenger and laugh in its face. If only they could look past its gritty exterior and appreciate it for what it is. 
a schlocky, no-holds-barred, take-no-prisoners, cheaply-made action horror comedy that feels like a 90-minute roller coaster ride all the way. What it lacks in CGI, it makes up for with genuine laughs and an undeniably indie spirit that even a lot of independent films today seldom get right. The majority of Troma's movies are pretty hard to sit through, but I honestly consider this one a rare gem. And if you have 90 minutes to spare and a deranged sense of humor, it might be the lost movie you've been looking for.